So how long is a day? You might say it's 24 hours. The time it takes for the Earth to rotate once around its axis. And that's almost true. But in reality, the time it really takes for the Earth to rotate once around its axis is 23 hours, 56 minutes and 4 seconds. That's almost 4 minutes short. But if that's the case, then why do our clocks use 24 hour period as a day? And if a day is really that much short, then wouldn't it be a large difference as day passes by? That's what we are going to find out in this video. To verify this, if you observe the same star with some fixed point of reference each night, what you will find is that the same star next day would arrive a little earlier than what you expect. That if you observe the star today at 8 pm, then the next day the star would be there at 7.56. And this is the same reason why you might have heard that the best time to view the Orion constellation is actually the winter evenings and not the summer because it is it there? Then you might think that if things are this simple, then why aren't we using this 4 minute shorter day as a real day? Well, the problem is that this 4 minute difference becomes so huge as time goes by that if this goes for example 6 months, then if it's 8 pm and it's night outside today, then 6 minutes later it would be an entirely different thing. The whole day and night timings wouldn't really make much sense. And this is where the taking reference of sun for our day and night comes in. And that's why there are two kinds of days, which is the sidereal day and the solar day. Now the day where we actually take the rotation of earth as the reference and the position of stars is actually called sidereal day. And the one which we use is a solar day because we as human beings want to be a little more dependent on sun. Now we humans are naturally accustomed to take the sun as a reference because our bodies are naturally evolved to take sunrise as the time to wake up and sunset after the time as it gets dark, the time to sleep. So to take sun as a reference of a day is a no-brainer. And we, what we can do is that we can take this reference of solar day as from sunrise of today to the sunrise of tomorrow. So that's basically the sun returning to the same place in our sky. And that is equal to our one solar day. And we have solved all of our problems. It's the night day problem which we have solved. So what's the problem? Well, <laughs> it actually changes because we already know that the days are actually shorter in the winters and longer in the summers. So if we use this as our day, then the lengths are actually gonna keep on changing throughout the year. And again, this is also not the same for the people living in the different locations on the earth. So what do we do and what exactly is a day? And this is a good question. This one is actually the apparent solar day taken from sunrise of one day to the sunrise of another. Now this actually changes because our earth revolves around the sun and it's natural because we are tilted at 23.5 degrees with respect to the plane of earth's revolution and as the earth moves around the sun throughout the year, our, the sun's path in our sky is actually not that same. It changes throughout the year similarly. If you take the sun's analemma for example, noting its position each day at exact same time, you will get something similar to this. This pattern is the analemma. And also since it's an elliptical orbit, the earth will speed up and slow down and so is the sun in the sky. So it's natural that the apparent solar days are really gonna change. But how do we fix this? Now this also explains why sidereal days are actually a little shorter. Take this figure for example. Now you can see that earth is retreating and also is revolving. So because of this, if you take this as a first day, this is where the earth is and this is where the sun is pointing. This part of the earth is experiencing noon and the part which is exactly opposite to it is, is experiencing its midnight. So if you see that this arrow is pointing towards the sun and this arrow is actually pointing towards some star X. Now the next day, you will see that this, uh, the earth has actually moved this much of the distance and it would be somewhere around its orbit of revolution. So this is where our new earth is and the next day you would see that if you point the same arrow towards the sun, 
the arrow which would be pointing out in the stars would actually be different. So this means that this star which you saw yesterday would have arrived there a little earlier. This is why sidereal day is actually shorter than a solar day. But of course this diagram would also change as the earth would be at different points on its orbit around the sun. So what do we do now? Well this is where the mean solar time comes in. And what we do is that we imagine a fictitious sun running in a circular path and then across the equator and completing its revolution the same time as our original sun. This day is actually the one which is 24 hours long. And this is the same reason why we have divided our longitudes in time. Astronomically speaking, we know that the vernal equinox gamma is actually the origin of the universal equatorial system. And with this, we also know that it is actually a point on the celestial sphere. Now we know that this celestial sphere is basically the stars in our night sky. And as the celestial sphere rotates with time, the vernal equinox gamma would also rotate with it. And taking this vernal equinox gamma's position as a reference can be taken as our sidereal day. The time the vernal equinox takes to return to the same place. The coordinates of vernal equinox gamma in the local equatorial system are actually r gamma, which is its r angle. And this is actually also the local sidereal time. We know that as r angle, the r is actually the origin here, which is the south side of this north-south meridian line. We can see that as the vernal equinox gamma passes the r, this is actually the zero r. This is a celestial sphere. This is the north-south meridian line, which is the RT, and that is the north-south line, which is actually off the poles, and that is your horizon, and this is the celestial equator. So the local sidereal time is just R gamma. So it's this arc length running westwards from R towards the gamma. Now this is where the things are gonna get interesting. What if I introduce a new star X here? Now this star X is actually not really needed, but to find the relation between both of the coordinates, this would come really handy. You can see that the both expressing the coordinates of x in both would be actually the r angle of x would be this rj, this arc length right here measured westwards, and its right ascension would actually be the gamma j, which would actually be this arc length from the vernal equinox gamma here towards east till the j. What this means is that basically this gamma j and this r j is actually same as the r gamma which is our local sidereal time so this gives us a new relation that is local sidereal time is actually equal to the r angle plus right ascension for any star this relation is true for any star out there and technically <laughs> you really don't need a star to do this measurement but this is really a good relation However, things doesn't end here. What if we do this to the mean sun, which was our fictitious sun? So the sum of coordinates of the mean sun would actually be equal to the local sidereal time. The relation for this should look like the right ascension of the mean sun plus the r angle of mean sun equal to the local sidereal time. Now we forgot our origin sun. So let's do this for that. The local sidereal time would actually equal to the right ascension of origin sun plus the r angle of origin sun. So we have these two relations right here. What you can see here is that the local side real time is same in both of them. So what we can do is that equate these two equations and we are left with this. The right ascension of mean sun minus the right ascension of original sun is equal to the r angle of original sun minus the r angle of mean sun. And that is a powerful relation because it links our mean solar time with our apparent solar time. So that's pretty interesting. Now this is called the equation of time and it is true throughout the year. And this difference of our angle can be taken as the ET and can be plotted easily on a graph with time. And this is the graph which we get, showing you how does the difference vary throughout the year. Now you can see here that the difference actually goes zero four times in a year. So this was our day and I hope you had a good one too. So this is it for this one and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Happy stargazing till then. Bye.